Hi, Dr. Dawn Sears here, Gut Girl MD. I am so excited that you are ready to start a Women Leaders in Medicine program. You have your key group picked, you have potential speakers picked, you have a potential venue, and even a date. You are ready to put your proposal forward. You are ready to go to leadership to pitch it. However, they're going to come to you with two major questions. They're going to say, this is a great idea, Dr. Smith. How are you gonna pay for this? And Dr. Smith, tell us how others are paying for this. Have we ever changed the world in following what others are doing? Probably not. You are a very creative person. You are very intelligent. However, you have not been rewarded for your creativity and you've only been rewarded for following the chosen path, for going to undergraduate, then going to medical school, then going to residency, then potentially going to fellowship and following all the rules, regulations, and oversight to be the successful physician that you are today. Well, now I'm gonna encourage you to get creative and to think outside the box. This is hard for some of us when we have been showing up for a roadmap already put before us. So I'm going to help start some creative juices flowing for you. Imagine if you had no barriers and you were given money to put together a program of your dreams. You can do this on the cheap. We did our program for 100 physicians anywhere from 10 to $20,000. And when you're talking healthcare with a billion dollars of budget for, in, for large institutions, this is not a big ask. However, very few institutions have a line item for women leaders in medicine. So what I'm gonna do is give you 10 ideas you don't have to pick any of them, and odds are you may just pick parts, bits and pieces of a few of them, but you are gonna come up with the perfect solution for you, leveraging your strengths and your talents in your local environment. So of this, the first one I'm gonna talk about is leveraging wellness initiatives that are already in place. This um, is obvious, but the way you're gonna frame it may not be obvious. 30 to 35% of your physicians are women physicians. So when you go forward to the person in charge of the wellness budget, you can ask for 30 to 35% of their budget. Are they gonna give that to you? Chances are not. But if they recommend maybe 10%, are you gonna take that? Absolutely. The next thing you can look at is lectureships. You probably already have some existing lectureships at your institution. And if you're looking at areas and divisions and departments that have a large amount of females, such as pediatric, maybe 72% pediatrics, they may be highly interested in using one of their lectureship guests to talk about the things that you want to expand at your Women Leaders in Medicine or invite their speaker on the same day as your event. Also think about areas where we're underrepresented, such as orthopedics. Nationally, it's only 6.5 women physicians. They may see this as a great opportunity to show that they are ready to change and become part of the solution. Now, this one may scare you. This is grants. I am not talking about a 35 page R01. I'm talking about a one to three page grant application that's very simple to your medical societies in your state, in your county, for your specialty. Often they have well-being or anti-burnout initiatives that these can roll into perfectly. Then there's always charging your participants. When we surveyed all of our 300 to 400 women physicians who participated, 90% said, yes, they'd be happy to use funds for this, especially if CME were offered and if they could use part of their CME or use it as a tax write-off for CME. So consider this when you were designing your program. Sponsorship. As you've been to a national meeting, you've seen all the big banners, all the floor stickers, you know about big pharma sponsoring. But in your community, you may need to think differently. Imagine what that room looks like with a hundred of your female physicians in it. These are the decision makers for their household. So you may want to think about outside the box, such as childcare services, food delivery services, housekeeping services, maybe um, a 
group that's providing disability coverage wants to come in and provide breakfast to have 10 minutes of time and the ear of all of these physicians, knowing that they'll get a conversion of three to 5%, it is well worth their time. You can also think about having them sponsor other meals or other gifts. Then there is internal sponsorship, fear of missing out, FOMO. This is a real issue because you are going to be very successful. You are going to have an amazing program where um, there is going to be a huge grassroots effort and others are going to want to be part of that. They want to be part of the success. We invited surgery to provide leadership books for each of our participants. So they all ended up leaving with some Brene Brown, some Angela Duckworth, some Jim Collins. And we had surgery put in a little sticker that said, this is brought to you by the Department of Surgery. You can also consider having the foundation come in to buy your dinner in exchange for talking about their alumni fundraising opportunities. For us, we have a lot of paperwork for uh, liquor and alcohol. So we asked the board of directors, it would be great if each of you brought a bottle of wine to our event so that we could share that with all the participants. And they were happy to do that. So you never know until you ask. This is a fun one, silent auction. This you can do ahead of time to get some engagement, to get some advertising going for your event, as well as leverage some of the skills and possible side gigs or spouse or partner um, corporations, um, LLCs, and other interests. With this, you may find that you have a significant number of your physicians that are doing coaching. They may go ahead and, and donate some coaching time. You may have some people in your group who have vacation homes and they may be willing to donate a week of their VRBO. You may have spouses that are in landscaping or interior design or finance or real estate that may be willing to donate their services. So for very little overhead, you could raise thousands of dollars to help fund this. Legal and HR. If you don't ask, they're not going to give it to you. But when we're talking about women leaders in medicine, this is often where institutions will bleed money unnecessarily from loss of physicians, new recruitment, slower uptake, as well as legal issues from any toxic work environments, any gender discrimination cases. So putting the, the, your program forward, you could get some funding from HR and legal. If you don't ask, again, they're not gonna give you a dime, but if you ask, you may be surprised. Then there's diversity, equity, and inclusion. Right now, these are buzzwords. These are hot topics. Well, this is an apart, um, important opportunity to collaborate. At our institution, we found that of our 700 male physicians, 74% self-identified as Caucasian. However, when we asked our females, only 52% self-identified as Caucasian. So 48% were across the spectrum. And when you look at our females, you see much more diversity in all areas, race, religion, ethnicity, sexual orientation, et cetera. So if we can show that we are leveraging this and having these women stay at our institution, this may also help um, with other efforts that are going on. And then there's fundraising for sustainability. We want everyone to see that this is not a one-time show. This is something that needs to be a sustained program. So if you encourage the women that are participating to contribute to a foundational account, to show that there is backing, there is interest, there is skin in the game, and then inviting male colleagues, inviting alumni to participate with this, this can show that there is a future with women leaders in medicine. And this is not just an interesting topic to talk about right now. So imagine the world where we change it, where we make it, where women thrive in healthcare where partners do not quit or go part-time, where we are all ready to elevate each other, to empower each other and encourage each other. If any of this is helpful for you, I'd appreciate if you leave it by comment or if you'd uh, like or subscribe. Uh, I would also offer to you that we can work together to come up with a unique program for you. And you can download a free brochure on how to do a women in medicine program at your institution, the sample agenda, samples budget, sample um, business cases and surveys. You can find all of that at Dr. Dawn Sears. 
Facebook.com, DawnsYearsMD.com, or GutGirlMDConsulting.com. I look forward to working with you as we make the world of medicine a better place. Thank you.